want to say praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly want to give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. I can truly say that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The scripture says, let us enter in his gates with thanksgiving and enter in his courts with praise. We want to give thanks to the Lord for this uh, great Palm Sunday. Uh, I want to welcome every one of you to the broadcast, the e-service of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, where I am the lead pastor, uh, Bishop-elect Pastor Frankie L. Quinn. And we certainly do thank and praise the Lord uh, for all those that are here at Christian Ministries. We want to send a special shout out to all of our leadership, my lovely wife as well, Lady Tracy Quinn. And we want to also thank God and praise God for all others that support this great ministry. We want to thank and praise the Lord also for um, just allowing us another day, another day's journey. And as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, we want to certainly remember all of our uh, people that are on the front lines and everyone that is um, serving and everyone that is uh, going through. Um, we want to certainly praise God and, and pray for those that have been affected of this virus. I was talking to uh, one of our pastors um, earlier, uh, well, yesterday, and she made mention that uh, her son uh, was affected with the virus in New York City, but gives a good report that uh, he's doing well. His fever has broke, and we uh, pray to God that he continues to be on the mend. So let us continue to pray for uh, people. Surely, um, though people are uh, being consumed by this particular virus, not everybody is sick unto death. So let us pray that uh, the Lord will continue to protect us and to continue to watch over us that we may remain Corona free. Um, also pray for our services throughout the day that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We just certainly do thank you and praise you, give you glory and honor, and we thank you, Lord, for being our blessing, being our strength. We ask you, Lord, that you bless this service, bless those that are hearing under the sound of the voice, and Lord, we ask you, Lord, to remember those that are on the front lines, those that are going through. In the name of Jesus, send forth your protection, send forth your healing and deliverance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we want to delve into our Sunday school lesson on this morning. And um, it's in connection to uh, it being Palm Sunday. And the subject of our subject uh, of our Sunday school lesson is uh, the lowly king, the lowly king. And that is a reference uh, to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Jesus came meek and lowly and humble um, so that he could give life to all of those that need deliverance. He presents himself as the lowly king. Um, and one that was meek and submitted, a submitted servant. Uh, the scriptures in the book of Isaiah last week talked about how he was bruised, how he was wounded uh, for our transgressions and uh, the trespasses of our sins or our iniquities was laid upon him. And the scripture says by his stripes or with his stripes, we are healed. Uh, that's what Jesus offers. He offers healing. He offers deliverance. And as we move toward uh, this particular week, as he, with the scrub subject is, scripture is found in the book of Zechariah, Zechariah chapter number nine. And if you could follow along with me, it would be greatly appreciated. Zechariah chapter number nine. Amen. And if you have your Bibles, uh, please turn with me as we go through uh, these particular uh, scriptures. And uh, this particular book, the book of Zechariah, was written um, uh, after the exile of the children of Israel. 
as you know, that the children of Israel, they were disobedient unto God uh, and um, they were taken captive by the Babylonians. Uh, the tribes were uh, divided uh, into two, Judah and Benjamin, and then the other 10 remaining tribes uh, represented the northern kingdom. Um, they were taken captive by the Assyrians. But the, the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, they were taken captive by uh, the Babylonians and were held captive there. Uh, if you remember, just to jog your memory, uh, you remember uh, the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel was written and uh, he and um, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, Daniel in the lion's den, and things like that. Those books, those books were written uh, while they were in captivity. And the unique thing about Daniel was that um, he survived that whole 70 years. And um, it's a very powerful prayer that at the end of the captivity, Daniel begins to pray. And he begins to pray what? That Solomon prayer uh, that Solomon said uh, when he dedicated the temple that if my people that were called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, shall seek my face and call, turn from their wicked ways, God said he would hear from heaven. The unique thing about it is, is that Daniel recognized uh, through the spirit that the 70 years were up. So he begins to enter into fasting and praying and seeking after God so that God would forgive the sins of the people. He was a, a really a dynamic prayer. He would forgive the sins of the people and, and he would pray um, wanting the people's hearts to turn back to God, to turn back to God. And that's a common theme with us, even on today, uh, to get the hearts of the people to turn back to God. It's a good thing uh, to turn back unto the Lord. And people nowadays need to do that, need to turn, turn, turn. And that word turn has the connotation of repentance. Repentance means to uh, go in another direction. Realize that you have been on the wrong road, so you get off of that road and you turn to go in another direction. And that's what true repentance is. It's the true repentance is a turning, a turning not only of the heart, but of the body and the soul. It's a complete turning unto God. So as we uh, look at our scriptures here on today, I said all that to say in the book of Zechariah, the children of Israel at this point have been um, set free. Um, not all have gone out of captivity back to the homeland of Jerusalem, but um, some have remained captive. And in this book is broken down into, in this particular chapter, is broken down into two kind of outlines, um, uh, the promise of the Messiah and the promise of uh, deliverance by God for the remaining uh, people that are held captive. All right. So as we look at our scripture in the book of Zechariah, chapter number nine, in verse number nine, I just want to read through the whole lesson just to kind of give us uh, some understanding. It says, uh, Zechariah chapter number nine and verse number nine, rejoice greatly, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the fold of an ass. Verse number 10, and I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace unto the heathen and his dominion shall be from the sea even to sea and from the river even to the ends of the earth. Verse number 11, as for thee also by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Verse number 12, turn you to 
be the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. When I have bent bow for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, and raised up the sons of Zion against the sons of Greece, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrows shall go forth as the lightnings. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. Verse 15. It says, the Lord of hosts shall defend them and they shall devour and subdue and sling stones and they shall drink and make a noise as, as though as through wine and they shall be filled like bows and as the corners of the altar. Verse 16, and the Lord their God shall save them in that day as a flock of of his people for the for they shall be as the stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon his land in the last verse of this particular lesson it says for how great is his goodness and how great is his beauty corn shall uh, make the young man cheerful and wine uh, the maids amen so as we uh, look at our scripture here today, um, some of the language there is, um, is ancient. And so therefore you uh, really need uh, someone to help decipher uh, what the word of the Lord has said. Uh, that reminds me of the Ethiopian uh, eunuch when he met up with uh, the deacon. Uh, and uh, the deacon uh, asked the Ethiopian eunuch, understandest thou what thou readest? And he says, how can I except some men guide me? Um, so that's what I'm here to do today. I'm here today to help guide you through the scriptures. Um, as we look at our lesson uh, here today uh, in the book of Zechariah, um, it says rejoice, verse number nine, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold thy king cometh unto thee and he is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the fold of an ass. And we know that this particular scripture is uh, written in reference to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a prophecy of his coming, of his advent, of his first coming. Um, and um, this scripture was fulfilled in the Gospels. Each of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, record this triumphant entry of Jesus entering into Jerusalem. We see here that uh, these particular scriptures, um, uh, the event of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, um, he had just raised Lazarus from the dead. And just imagine, his fame had gone out throughout uh, Jerusalem and the around, uh, surrounding cities. And um, so Jesus had gained popularity, and um, he wanted to present himself as the Messiah, as the King. And the Bible, Bible scholars of Jesus' day, uh, they should have recognized, they should have recognized um, what was going on, but the scripture says even that his disciples, they were, they were blind or how can I say it? They um, didn't really connect the scriptures to what Jesus was doing. And that tells you something about our Lord. Everything that Jesus did, he did it according to the word of God. He never did things upon his own. He did things that were according to the will of God. In other words, he did things that were written. And that's how we should always live our life. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. How shall a young man cleanse his way? Amen. By taking heed to the word of God. 
Thy word is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. That's why uh, the scripture in Paul, I love it. Paul says we should study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we also should have what the scripture calls the mind of Christ. Christ uh, humbled himself and became obedient unto death. The scripture says, even the death of the cross. And therefore God have highly exalted him and given him a name above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And that's what I love about the life of Jesus. Jesus didn't just do things that were haphazard. Jesus did things that were according to the scriptures. He lived according to the word of God. And we ourselves ought to live our life according to the word of God. Uh, I like Psalms number one. It says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seateth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, his happiness, his joy is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And that's what we ought to be. We ought to uh, delight ourselves in the law of the Lord. And in order to live out and walk out the law of the Lord on a daily basis, you have to be mindful of it and meditate on it day and night. And I just want to say one more thing about that before I move on. Uh, it reminds me of, of James when he says, uh, uh, let us be slow to speak, swift to hear, and slow to wrath. That means that you've got to really ponder your actions. Amen. Think about what you say, what you do, and how you respond to the word of God. Amen. So as we look here, we see uh, the scripture says rejoice greatly. This is a, a time of rejoicing when the Messiah shall present himself. They were looking for the Messiah. They were looking for the deliverer. Amen. And this the deliverer that they were looking for, they were looking for a deliverer to lead a revolt against the Roman soldiers. Uh, so he says, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Zion represents the church or represents the kingdom, the kingdom Jerusalem. Amen. The Israelites, Zion. Notice he says, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. And that's when, uh, when Jesus entered into Jerusalem, that's when they begin to cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna, amen, which means, Lord, save now, save now, amen. So they were praising and they were worshiping when they would see him. He says, and notice he says, he is just. And that word just there means that he is righteous. Jesus is righteous, amen. The scripture says that there was no guile found in his mouth. He was righteous and holy. What made him righteous and holy? His obedience to the word of God. Amen. Uh, as we look at different figures in the scriptures, uh, Job, uh, well, the first one is called righteous, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, somebody correct me. Uh, Noah. Noah was found righteous in the sight of God. Why? Because Noah did the things that God required. Uh, also, too, uh, another one that was found righteous, um, uh, Job. Job was found righteous, amen, in the eyes of God. Why? What made Job righteous? Because he did those things which God commanded. Thank you, Lord. And Jesus is described as just or being righteous. Why? Because he is doing the things that God commanded. Elizabeth and Zechariah, those were the parents of John the Baptist. They too were righteous before the Lord. Why? Because they did those things which God commanded. If you want to be righteous, brother and sisters, you've got to do the things that God commands. Uh, in the scripture in the book of Isaiah says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Thank you, Lord. If you're going to be righteous, you've got to forsake your way and forsake your thoughts. And what also helps you to be righteous 
is the obedience to the spirit of God. The scripture says, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you into all truth. What truth? The biblical truth, the Bible truth. You've got to do it the Bible way. Uh, so he's, uh, the scripture declares that he is just, which means that he is righteous. And what causes him to be righteous is his obedience to the word of God. And then it says, and he's having salvation. Notice the scripture says he's having salvation. Um, uh, salvation represents deliverance. In other words, he's having it means that he's bringing it. When he comes, he's going to bring salvation. You remember uh, in Jesus's earlier time when he was uh, anointed of the Holy Ghost uh, after he had went into the wilderness and he had prayed, fasted and prayed 40, 40 days and 40 nights. And um, he told them after he had got done praying, be of good cheer, I have overcome. And um, uh, he was tempted of the devil. And then uh, shortly after that, the scripture says that he went into uh, uh, the synagogue. He went into the synagogue found the scripture, the scroll in Isaiah, and I believe it's Isaiah 61, and he stopped there, and he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And uh, this is, uh, Jesus was letting them know because after he had uh, quoted that uh, particular scripture and he closed the book, the Bible says, and then he said, these scriptures or this word has been fulfilled in your eyes. Right then he was declaring that he's the one that has salvation, that when he arrives or when he shows up, he's bringing salvation. And uh, notice what John the Baptist said. He said, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. So salvation means that uh, he's bringing deliverance. Amen. He's setting the captive free, those that need deliverance. He's healing the brokenhearted. Uh, the, he's, he's those that are bruised and those that are hurt, those that have gone through uh, mental anguish and mental pain and, and not only physical pain and the, and the power and effects of sin. Jesus came to heal us from these things. And, um, um, and the scripture says that he came, that he came with deliverance. He came to deliver those that were captive. Amen. So salvation and Jesus bringing forth deliverance, he's the one that is the deliverer, amen? And he has that deliverance ready for us. If we just receive him, the scripture says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And that's what, that's what we want. We want to become the sons of God through Jesus Christ. And that's what he has to offer. Notice, uh, having salvation, uh, and here he is, he says he's lowly, riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the fold of an ass. And um, these animals here depicted here, um, uh, riding upon an ass, it, it, the, the ass is symbolic in two ways. It's symbolic in the way that it represents uh, uh, the, the, the yoke of the law. Amen. The yoke of the law and the colt represents the 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 uh, the waywardness of the the Gentiles. In other words, the colt, uh, the ass represents the Jews, and the colt represents the Gentiles, and and that's one uh, way of looking at it. But the other way of looking at this, uh, which we'll get into right now, is that. The ass was, um, uh, and the colt, they symbolized uh, animals of humility. And when, when Vic kings would conquer different nations, they would ride upon these animals into 
uh, the city, and with them they would have the spoil, amen, um, the, 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 the prisoners and uh, also their, their, their bounty and the gold and the silver. They would ride in as a formal parade of showing uh, uh, that they triumphed over the enemies. And that's where we get the scripture where Paul says, and Jesus led captivity captive and gave good gifts unto men. So that, that's another symbol of the, of the triumphant victory over uh, Jesus Christ has gained for us over the enemy. Thank you, Lord. Jesus gained us the victory over the enemy. Don't, don't, be, don't be deceived, my friend. Uh, when they crucified the Christ and buried him in that tomb, uh, they thought it was over. The enemy thought it was over. They thought they had him. Uh, but in that number, that number three, the divine perfection, uh, he laid in that tomb, the scripture says, for three days and three nights. And when he got up, hallelujah, he got up with the victory. He got up with deliverance. And before he got up, the Bible says that he descended into hell. Thank you, Lord, and took the keys. Uh, that means the, the authority of death and the grave. My God, I don't want to get off track here, but I, I feel something moving in the atmosphere. Jesus gained us the victory. Hallelujah. That's why the scripture says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Then it says, Thanks be to God that giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There's victory in Jesus. My God, there's strength in Jesus. There is power in Jesus. And Jesus, he offers that victory to you and I. Jesus offers that victory to us. Thank you, Lord. If we would just receive him, if we would just uh, obey him, we would receive the victory that he offers unto us. And he's not like a pompous king. He's meek and he's lowly. Uh, he's, in other words, he's not going to force his salvation upon you. He's not going to beg uh, you to receive of him the, the deliverance and the glory that he has for you. He wants you to be of a willing mind and of a free mind to come unto him. That's why the scripture says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Notice, and I will give thee rest. Hallelujah. Rest from what? Rest from your sinful habits. Rest. Rest from being chased by the enemy, by the devil. Peace. Peace I leave unto you. Peace. Not as the world, he says, give I unto you. Hallelujah. So Jesus offers us a great peace and he offers us a great rest. Uh, so now that brings us then to verse number 10. I got to move on quickly here. Thank you, Lord. Verse number 10, it, it deals with, uh, verse number uh, 9 deals with the, the, the first coming of Jesus, which is um, um, represented in the four Gospels. Jesus came, uh, he was born of a virgin uh, by the name of Mary and a, in a manger. Y'all know the Christmas story. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And he grew up. Thank you, Lord. He grew up and then he presented himself as, as the king. Thank you, Lord. The king, the Messiah. Uh, the Messiah, that word means the, the anointed king, priest, and prophet. Uh, no one else in Jewish history uh, held those three offices in one person. And that was only held through Jesus Christ. And Jesus knew that he had to go uh, to die on the cross. And that, uh, as you know, that once he presented himself as the Messiah, he died uh, a week later, crucified, rejected of them. They were rejoicing the first week. And then when they didn't, uh, when Jesus uh, didn't do what they thought he would do, uh, they, 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 they turned on him. Thank you, Lord. They turned on him. And that's what a lot of people do today. When, when they can come to Jesus and they, they are expecting something from him that they want. Uh, but you've got to remember that 
Jesus came to do the will of the Father to set the people uh, free from sin. Not, he didn't come to give you a house. He didn't come to give you a car. He didn't come to give you a job. Amen. He didn't come to give you a relationship with somebody. He came to give you uh, peace, uh, to reconcile you unto God. And, and people that come to Jesus and not fully realizing that, um, and when they don't uh, uh, receive their car, they don't receive their house, they turn on them. When, they don't, when life doesn't seem to, to, to uh, level out, they turn on Jesus, and they instead of worshiping him, they curse him. So we don't want to be like that. Amen. We want to serve the Lord with the right purpose. Amen. For the right reason. And that's to receive deliverance from our sins for he can reconcile us back unto the Lord. And no doubt, the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. So, so there are benefits Hallelujah for serving the Lord. There's blessings for serving the Lord, but you cannot uh, 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 serve him for the wrong reasons. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So I said that to say to set us up for verse number 10. Uh, verse number nine deals with the first coming of Jesus. And verse number 10 deals with the second coming of Jesus. When he uh, is going to, is after the tribulation, after uh, 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 the tribute, the church age is ended, the tribulation phase has ended, and now he's going to establish his kingdom upon this earth. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And a lot of people think that they're just going to spend their days in heaven, but God created the earth to be inhabited. That's why the scripture says he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. And we're going to be able to transcend from heaven to earth as an earth to heaven. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So we see here at that day. Notice this is a prophecy of, of the millennium kingdom that Jesus is going to establish. He said, I will cut off the chariot of Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem and the battle blow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen. And notice, here it is. His dominion shall be from sea even to sea. That word dominion means his rule. Amen. Jesus is going to establish his rule from sea to sea. Uh, in other words, that's poetic language from uh, uh, across this world. Upon this world, the dominion of Jesus is going to be established. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He's going to rule upon this earth. My God, he's going to rule his kingdom of his kingdom. Uh, there shall be no end. Y'all remember in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number nine, it says unto us, a, a child is born unto us, a son is given notice and the government shall be upon his shoulders. Thank you, Lord. Uh, and his name shall be called wonderful counselor, prince of peace, mighty God, everlasting father. Thank you, Lord. And of his kingdom, there it is. It shall be no end. And this is a prophecy uh, in, in, in Zechariah chapter number uh, 9 and verse number 10 of that dominion kingdom that Jesus is going to establish here upon this earth forever. And his throne is going to be in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is going to be where he establishes his throne. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So that's something to look forward to. In other words, that's something to live for. So we see here then uh, verses number 11 all the way through verses 17. It's really now a prophecy of uh, that, 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 that those that were remained captives in uh, Jerusalem and in, in, in Babylon. Remember in the first uh, beginning of this lesson, I told you that there were going to be people that were that that were captive in Babylon uh, the, of the tribe of Judah, of the tribe of Benjamin. Thank you, Lord. 
and the 70 years of their captivity, it was over. But some were still left there. And um, God is promising to get out the remnant, to get the remnant. Those were ones that were left there. He's promising that I won't forget you and I'll bring you out. Thank you, Lord. And that's the, that's the way God is. Thank you, Lord. God has never forgotten about his people. God will never forget about you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Though you may be in a rock and a hard place, though you may find yourself in a dry and a weary land, uh, rest assured, God knows where you are. And God sees where you are. And he that shall come, he will come and he will not tarry. When it's time for your deliverance, the Lord will be right there. And what I like about uh, these preceding scriptures, thank you, Lord, is the fact that the Lord is representing himself as the Lord of hosts. And anytime God represents himself as the Lord of hosts, he's representing himself as a warrior, as a fighter. Hallelujah. And if God be for you, who then can be against you? If God is on your side, my God, who then can stop the power of God from rescuing you uh, for going in in a stealthy, hallelujah, military type of way and bringing you out and delivering you from the hand of the enemy? You can trust in the Lord. You can believe on him. You can put your uh, 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 confidence in him because the Lord will deliver. The Lord knows them that are his. He knows every word that he has spoken. He knows every promise that he has given. And the Lord will not leave nor forsake his people no matter what condition they're under. My God, no matter what the enemy may try to do, no matter what the enemy may try to bring upon you, God will not uh, uh, forsake you nor leave you if you remain faithful unto him. Thank you, Lord. And so that's what the scriptures are saying. Notice he says, uh, as, as for thee also by the blood of the covenant. My God. See that? God, God, does we, we have entered into, I'm going to bring this to the New Testament day. Uh, uh, we have a blood covenant with the Lord. And that blood covenant was uh, our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it was sealed uh, when he sent back the Holy Ghost, when he sent back the anointing. And when we received the Holy Ghost, we were sealed ourselves under that blood covenant until the day of redemption. Uh, the, uh, the Old Testament says, when I see the blood, hallelujah, I'll cause death to pass over you. My God, and that's what Jesus, that's what Jesus did uh, when he went to Calvary. When he hung on that cross, he was becoming a blood sacrifice for you and I. And, and God had made promise, my God, through his word, that, 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 that the, through the remission of sins, through the blood, not the blood of bulls, not the blood of goats, but through the precious blood of Jesus, Hallelujah. What shall wash away your sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. God honors covenants. God honors his agreement. My God, if you enter into this covenant with Jesus Christ, my God, God will honor you. God will bless you. He won't forsake you. Now notice what he says. I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit where wind is no water. In other words, they were in pits that were like, uh, 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 that had no water, my God, and God saying that I will rescue them. I will bring them out. Sometimes, my friend, we get into situations, we get into conditions where it seems like we're dry, where it seems like there's no hope. But if we trust in the Lord, the Lord will bring us out. He will bring us out more than a conqueror. I'm reminded of what David said. David said, I am, uh, I was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. In these days and times, hallelujah, you may feel like you're going through, hallelujah, but you need to look up 
because your redemption draweth nigh. You need to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. And do good. And the scripture says, verily shalt thou dwell in the land. Jesus told us, I don't know if you remember, my friend, Jesus told us that, that we're going to be in some perilous times. He told us that the conditions of the family was going to deteriorate. He told us that there were going to be wars and rumors of wars. Amen. But he said, the end is not yet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So he was referring because those, those things have been happening down through the ages, even unto the day. My God. And he said that the kingdom or the gospel is going to be preached in every nation. Hallelujah. But, but he was letting us know that we were going to go through some things. Amen. But he said, he that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. So no matter the condition or the situation you're in, you've got to build yourself up. Hallelujah. You've got to pray in the Holy Spirit or in the Holy Ghost. You've got to read your word. You've got to fast. You've got to seek the Lord while he is, can be found and while he is near. Don't forsake. Hallelujah. Don't forsake yourself from the assembling of, of together. Don't forsake. Hallelujah. Your fellowship with your brothers and sisters. My God, though we can't come together like we want to come together as a body, thank you, Lord, a physical body, but yet we have other means. You have cell phone, you have, you have video, you have uh, uh, letters, you have different means and ways to come together. And God expects us to stand strong. My God, my friend, I feel the Holy Ghost. And when I tell you this, that when we come out of this, we're going to be stronger. When we come out of this, we're going to be better. My God, we're going to be more attentive to the word of God, more attentive and appreciate our brothers and our sisters. We're going to be more attentive to the power that was resting and residing in us. So we see here, as the Lord says in verse 13, he says, um, I'm sorry, verse number 12, turn Ye to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. No, notice what he says. Prisoners of hope. Hallelujah. And that's what, that's what you can feel like sometimes. You can feel like a prisoner, but know that you are a prisoner of hope. God will deliver you from a hard place. Hallelujah. God will deliver you. My Lord, the arm of the Lord is not short. Hallelujah. So you got you to gotta maintain your confidence. You got to maintain your hope. Hallelujah, because God is a warrior. God will fight for you. God will literally give nations over for you. My God, God will do whatever it takes, my Lord, to deliver you out from the hand of the enemy. My Lord, I'm encouraged today. You ought to be encouraged today. Hallelujah, because our Lord, he's strong and he's mighty. Notice verse 13, and he says, when I have bent Judah for me, and, he, and, and filled the bowl with Ephraim and raised up the sons of Zion against the sons of Greece. Now notice, he's, he's saying here that he's going to raise up Israel as a mighty army to fight against the Grecians. Thank you, Lord. God raises up his people as a mighty army to fight against against the, 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 the nations that are wicked, that are evil, that are fighting against the things that are of God. That's why the scripture says the battle doesn't belong to you, but the battle belongs to the Lord. It doesn't mean that you fight your battle. We got to fight the Lord's battle. We fight the Lord's battle. Now I must say again, we fight the Lord's battle. We are his servant. Amen. He is our Lord and we are not his Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So, 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 uh, uh, remember in the book of Daniel, when, uh, they asked, uh, no book, I'm sorry, the book of Ezekiel, he asked, uh, the can these dry bones live? And, and, and then y'all know the story. He put together those dry bones and then those dry bones became a mighty army. Amen. To fight for the Lord. 
Hallelujah. The Lord brings us out of darkness. He brings us out of captivity. He pulls us to put on the whole armor of God that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. Thank you, Lord, so that we can fight in his kingdom. And notice, the scripture says we don't fight against flesh and blood. It's not against people, but we're fighting against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's why, my God, can I just get off track just for a minute? That's why we've got to have utmost integrity, utmost righteousness, because we represent the king of kings. We represent the Lord of lords. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm not representing myself. I'm representing the one who has brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. I am representing him as his ambassador. Amen. We are ambassadors for Christ. Hallelujah. Not, not, not that we seek to do our own will, but we seek to do the will of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you just clap your hands, brothers and sisters, and give God a praise? Hallelujah. And realize that this battle doesn't belong to you, but the battle belongs to the Lord. That's why the scripture says, vengeance belongs unto the Lord. Amen. Vengeance doesn't belong to you. Vengeance belongs unto the Lord. I'm excited today. My God. Hallelujah. So God, in this particular scripture, verse 13, it tells how he's going to raise up a mighty army. A mighty army to fight. Amen. God is raising us up, my Lord, as a mighty army to fight. And who's our captain? Our captain is Jesus Christ. He's the one that began a good work in you and he shall perform it. Hallelujah. He shall complete it. Hallelujah. So all you got to do is stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. All you got to do is, is be equipped and empowered by the Holy Ghost and operate. Hallelujah. The way God wants you to operate. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. I feel, I feel strong up in here. Hallelujah, I feel some anointing flowing up in here. Ah, my God, because we're talking about him. My Lord, I know they limited us down to 10, but God said all you need is two or three. <laughs> Hallelujah, gather together in my name. He said I'll be in the midst. My God, he'll be in the midst. Thank you, Lord. So where are the prayer warriors? My Lord, I'm calling all the prayer warriors to pray. My Lord, where are those that love to consecrate themselves before the Lord? Hallelujah. Where are the givers? My God, where are the soldiers? Where are the generals that are willing to fight? My Lord, and what are we going to fight? The good fight of faith. My Lord, and lay hold on that eternal life. My God, let us win souls. Let us turn men from darkness to light. From the power of Satan unto God. Let us seek after, hallelujah, that we may help those to attain an inheritance. My God, an inheritance that is of the Lord. My Lord, let us, let us, let us, let us fight. Hallelujah, let us fight for what Jesus calls right. Let us fight, hallelujah, for the things that God has, has enabled us to do. He has gifted us. He has given us a word. Let us use that word. Hallelujah. Let us use that word to speak life. Let us bind on earth. Hallelujah. The things that need to be bound in heaven. Let us loose on earth those things that can be loosed in heaven. All right. Now we see in verse 14. Thank you, Lord. Uh, it says, and the Lord uh, shall be seen over them. Notice. The Lord is going to be seen over his people. Hallelujah. The, 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 the Bible says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works to glorify your father, which is in heaven. In other words, while you're fighting, while you're going out to battle, the Lord is with thee. The Lord never goes to battle. Uh, you never go to battle without the Lord. The Lord is with thee. Uh, he'll never forsake thee. The Lord is a warrior. He's a battler. And when you fight, the glory of the Lord shall be seen. The power of the Lord shall be seen. Uh, and just to give you a, a little illustration of this, 
I got about five more minutes. Y'all just bear with me. Hallelujah. Uh, remember when the children of Israel, when they came out of uh, the land of Egypt, uh, God was with them. His glory was with them. in a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. Thank you, Lord. And then when they approached the impossible, the Red Sea, when he approached the impossible, the Red Sea, God, God showed his power. Thank you, Lord, by that east wind that blew and, they, and, and opened up that sea and it gelled on both sides and they walked on that red, on that dry ground. Hallelujah. They walked through that sea on dry ground. God was with them. Thank you, Lord. And his glory was with them. And the people know, hallelujah, the enemy saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. And it was with them. When you walk with God, people ought to see the glory of God. Especially when you come to a hard place. When you come up against a Red Sea. Hallelujah. It ain't bigger than the Red Sea, I heard. Hallelujah. God is able to show forth his mighty hand. God is able to show forth his glory, his miracle signs and wonders, my God, to your enemy. That's why David said, the Lord prepareth a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. He anointeth my head with oil and yet my cup runneth over. My God, don't be afraid of the terror by night. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid by the pestilence that flies by noonday. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. The Lord is on your side. He'll show up. Hallelujah. He'll show up and that right early because God wants to get the glory. God wants to use you as a glory carrier. God wants to use you as a glory conduit. Thank you, Lord, that all men and all women may know that there is a God in Israel that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think. My God, hallelujah, it said the Lord of hosts, there it is, the Lord of hosts shall defend them. The Lord of hosts shall defend you. And anytime you see that word host, that means God is bringing the full weight of his military. Oh, hallelujah. God is bringing the full weight, hallelujah, of his army to deliver you. Hallelujah, my God. I'm getting excited, my friend. Hallelujah, God. Uh, he knows how to deliver the godly out of every temptation. God knows how to deliver those that trust him uh, from the hand of the enemy. Amen. And as we get ready to close here, we see in verse, I'm going to drop down, my God, to verse 16. He says, and the Lord their God shall save them in that day as a flock of his people. God, hallelujah. God is in the saving business, my Lord. And, and rest assured that, that what we're going through now, my Lord, God is going to save us. God is going to deliver us. God is going to save us. God is going to deliver us. He's going to bring us and use us as a testimony unto the Lord. Hallelujah. We've got to be a testimony unto the world. Thank you, Lord, that God is a savior, that God is a deliverer, that God is a strong tower. Hallelujah. That's why we ought to rest in him. The Bible says a man shall be as a hiding place, a shelter in the time of the storm. That's why you need to hide in Jesus right now. So when this is all over, when the storm has passed over, you'll be able to stand strong and say, I stood in the power of the Lord. He has become my refuge and my fortress. He's become my healer and my deliverer. Hallelujah. God is looking for testimonies. When we come out of this, God is looking for somebody, hallelujah, to tell everybody, hallelujah, that he is, hallelujah, the, that has the ability to set the captive free. My God, my God, my God. I'm encouraged today. My Lord, you be encouraged as well. And as we conclude in verse 17, and he says, how great is his goodness and how great is his beauty. 
Corn shall make the young man cheerful and new wine the maidens. In other words, this is a, a declaration that, that when we come out, we're going to come out fatter. We're going we're gonna to come out with food. We're going to come out with, 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 with the land, as the scripture says, as it flowed with milk and honey. So today, my friend, I want you to look unto Jesus and be excited for him. For he is our king. My Lord, my Lord, he is lowly. He is meek. And as the scripture says, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He said, I will give thee rest. Notice, he said, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we want you to let us pray before the Lord as we conclude this particular service and move forward to our 11 o'clock service. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the words that we have heard here on today. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord, for those who have tuned in. Thank you, Lord. Let this word be a blessing unto them. Let it encourage their hearts. Let it strengthen them in this tower of need. And Lord, those that are seeking you to turn to you, Lord, give them a repentant heart. Save them. Fill them with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Give you glory and honor in the precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.